Sitting next to me today is a 2022 Audi RS7. This is Audi's most sportiest sedan that they sell. It's powered by a four liter twin turbo V8 that makes over 550 horsepower. It's all wheel drive, has a quick transmission, and it is super comfortable and luxurious. And today I'm gonna to be bringing you a review of it. Let's hop right into the video. The RS7 is powered by a four liter twin turbo V8 makes 591 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. It's made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. And of course, this has quattro and a quattro tuned rear differential. And it is an extremely, extremely fun engine. And it makes a lot of great noises, especially while driving. It is a great powertrain for the RS7. This has a claimed zero to 60 time of around 3.5 seconds, according to Audi. And it can do 155 miles an hour as its top speed, but there is an option that will allow it to do 190 miles an hour as its top speed, which is incredibly fast. And you should probably never get a sedan up to 190 miles an hour in an uncontrolled environment. That is wicked fast. All right, now though this is a big German hatchback slash sedan, it does look really sleek looking and the drag coefficient is there to match. It has a 0.32 drag coefficient, which isn't as good as the Tesla Model S, I know, but it is still very low and makes this car super aerodynamic. And you don't even have to know that drag coefficient to know that this car is super aerodynamic. Now, I also love the headlights up here and they do a little dance when you go ahead and unlock the car. Now, sadly, it's not dark out, so you can't really see that dance, but it does look really good. We'll put it up on B-roll and try and see as much as you can. All right, now moving on to the exterior of the RS7, we're gonna go over some of the options that this car has equipped to it, starting with the black optics package, which includes things like this blacked out grill and this blacked out badge, along with this black bumper insert right here. And that also carries over to the back. You also get these black mirror housings right here and these 22 inch diamond cut rims with these 285 30 summer performance tires. This also has Audi's air suspension all around, which provides an adaptive ride. If you're in comfort, the car is very comfortable to drive in soft over bumps, but if you are in RS mode or RS2 mode, this is a very stiff car to drive. It provides plenty of ground feel when driving this car. Overall, this is a very, very good looking car, and it is very wide. From the front, it is about 76.5 inches wide without the mirrors being included, which is very, very wide. You also have these massive brace, brake discs up front, which are the 16.5 inches up front and 14.6 inch brake discs in the back, which provide plenty of stopping power, especially when you could potentially be going 190 miles an hour. It's awesome. Also included in the black optics package is going to be the black window trim around the back. Now, Moving into the back for cargo space and to look at the back as a whole, this has the Audi Sport exhaust with the black tips. They do good and the exhaust sounds really good. You also have this great LED light bar back here that looks really good as well with the black RS7 badge and black Audi logo. Now as for space in the trunk, this gets 24.6 cubic feet of cargo volume with the seats folded up, which is plenty of space to carry anything. Of course, like you know out there, if you're familiar with the RS7, the RS7 is a hatchback, not a sedan. Power closing trunk as well, but even standing back here, look how aggressive the rear end of this car looks. It's absolutely insane. And one of the best looking sedans I've ever seen out of Germany. Now, I can't wait to see something like an M8, M850i, or a GT63, GT53 from Mercedes. Those will be and are great competitors to this vehicle. Now, go ahead and hop inside and see what's going on in the interior.
All right, now hopping into the interior, the first thing I wanna go over is the fact that this has the RS design package in red, which you can also get in gray. Has things like the seat belts being black with the red borders on the outside, the Alcantara steering wheel with the red contrast stitching and red contrast stitching right here and a bunch of other Alcantara. You also have these carbon fiber inlays that it is exposed carbon fiber. It is not glossy and all covered, which looks really cool. And if you run your hand over it, you do get to feel the weaving. Of course, Audi's digital cockpit, two screens right here, which is pretty standard for higher end Audis. This one has the executive package on it, which adds things like heated rear seats and a heads up display. This also has Audi's adaptive cruise system on it. The interior is a great place to be. The steering wheel looks really good. All the materials are also very, very high quality and very soft as well. Now this RS7 is also equipped with the executive package, which gives you things like soft closed doors and heads up display, extended leather on the dash, the center console and the dorm armrest. And you also get heated rear seats for your rear passengers so they can be happy too. This also has the driver assistance package, which gives you Audi adaptive cruise control, Audi side assist with rear traffic alert. It also has intersection assist and traffic sign recognition, which is really nice. So you can always tell when you're breaking the speed limit. Now, I also like these seats right here with the red contrast stitching and the RS badge right there embossed into the back of the seat. It is really cool looking. This one also has a pretty decently sized sunroof, but you can also get the headliner in Dynamica, which is like an Alcantara suede feeling material. This one did not come equipped with that. That is a $3,000 option if you want the headliner of your vehicle to feel nice and soft. Now, as for things in the infotainment system in the vehicle settings, this is the most interesting part, is going to be the fact that you can choose your drive mode within the infotainment system, comfort, auto, and dynamic. And of course, you have your adjustable RS modes right there. You get two RS1 and RS2. Two. You also have the adaptive suspension, which can raise and lower the car, stiffen the suspension, everything like that, because this does have the air suspension equipped on it. You have your RS monitor right here, which over oversees things like your engine oil, coolant, sport differential, transmission fluid, and brake rotors, which is really nice. You scroll over, you can see your G meters and your tire pressure monitoring system, which is something that's really nice to have. You can also see things like light and visibility, efficiency assist, parking aid, other driver assist features, cool things like that. This infotainment system is really good. Um, I'm not usually a fan of having all the climate controls in the infotainment system, but this one is okay. The screen is responsive. So when you touch it, it gives you a little bit of feedback and you know, you can basically use it without having to look though. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. That's why I mostly prefer having the climate controls outside of the infotainment system, but I see what Audi was trying to do. This also has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is a really, really nice feature that I would love to see in more cars out there. Now, you can subscribe to a version of the navigation system in there, which provides satellite mapping from Google. This one does not have it, but the Q8 we reviewed, oh, somewhat probably four months ago, did have that subscription enabled, which enabled you to have a satellite imaging for the navigation system, which was wonderful. But this one does not have it. But the fortunate part of that is the mapping system from Audi still looks great. You can view it full screen in the gauge cluster and on the infotainment system, which is a really great feature. Now, the RS7 also has a deployable spoiler, and it's had this for the entire lifeline of this vehicle. Yep, the interior of this car is really, really nice to be in. Now, my favorite part of this, and this shouldn't be my favorite part of a high performance sedan, but it is my favorite part of it, is going to be the 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen 3D advanced sound system. Now, the Q8 had the 19 speaker Bang & Olufsen 3D premium sound system, but the advanced is the super high end one. Now, it is a 23 speaker system if you get it in the Q8, but in here it is 19 speakers instead and it is amazing. Now the Q8 had some amazing bass. This has one of the best sounding sound systems I've ever heard. The treble is amazing. The bass is there. It's, whew, I can't even explain to you guys what it's like to be in this car with the music blasted. Oh, it's a great time. Now sitting in the back seats, like I said, this is the executive package. So you do get heated rear seats back here. Another thing I forgot to mention, this has quad zone climate control. So not only do each one of the passengers here get to control their temperature, they get to control their own fan speed, which is a super nice feature that I love how these high-end German cars are implementing. Two USB type C's and a 12 volt socket, just in case you wanna plug in anything else. Back of the seats are nice and squidgy. Door materials are super nice. Back seat pockets right here, 
and the back seats are actually surprisingly comfortable. They're a little stiff down low in the lumbar section, but mostly they're okay. Event, vents right here, just in case you need to use those. Anyways, other things have back here, center console and some cup holders, right? Come on, Audi. There you go. So yes, back seats are a nice place to be. Map lights, reading lights, whatever you want to use those for. Headroom is kind of limiting when you sit straight up, but if you're slouching, it's okay, and you have plenty of knee room as well as long as you're not slouching too much. So even the back seats of the RS7 are a good place to be, but again, limited room. It is a hatchback, so you know you run into some issues. All right, now we are going to do a zero to sixty test of this thing. enough to Audi's claim time that I'm satisfied with it. All right, driving the RS7. Ooh, we have wanted to drive one of these forever. I remember when I was like 15 years old and I first saw the first generation of this car and I thought it was so cool and I loved the sound of the engine. But now it looks even cooler, makes even more power. Right now we're in dynamic in sport mode with this. So we're gonna see how it is in this before we go over to RS. <sighs> Check out the transmission is. Oh, it's fast. Oh, it's fast. It is quick and these brakes are awesome. Wow, that transmission is quick too. response could use a little tuning but geez oh, 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 oh wow that's fast faster than I thought that 591 horsepower is put to really 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 good use oh my okay back into automatic mode Jeez, that was in dynamic that wasn't even an RS okay well, first off, the steering is really, really good. Audi has a torque vectoring system they put in with the Quattro systems, and it generally makes up for um, for the over or the understeer that Audis have. Though a lot of people have complained that track use of the Quattro system has led to you know terrible amounts of understeer. so fast oh my gosh you won't have any problems passing people in traffic at all <laughs> oh lord so yeah back to the steering is electromechanical 15.9 to 1 steering ratio it's good it's direct and it gets the car around the corner pretty well so right now we're in the stiffest suspension settings and the road noise isn't bad, though the rims are big and the tires are thin. The road noise is still not bad at all. The ride is nice and firm and provides a sporty feeling. Though when you do and go into comfort mode, which I will do at one point, it makes the ride super soft and makes the car feel super cushy and luxurious to drive. But you guys saw how fast we were going triple digit speeds in absolutely no time at all which is uh, there's not many cars you can get in that make you feel surprised that they can be that fast but when you get in something like an rs7 um yeah it it can take you by surprise how quick these cars can actually be now the gas mileage is crap uh on the, in the city you're getting 15 miles a gallon on the highway 22 which leads to a combined of 17 miles per gallon which is not that much now audi says you could put 95 octane in this car i've never been anywhere in the united states where a normal pump offers 95 max i've seen is 93 minimum i've seen for premium is 91 but you can't put 91 in here 
the heads up display is nice shows the speed limit and your current speed and the heads up display changes when you do put it into rs mode so right now i am in rs1 and oh, 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 oh my lord oh my gosh it just is so fast It's so fast. <laughs> oh my gosh. It takes you by so much by surprise. But you know what? It handles so well. Like you don't feel like you're gonna lose control at all when driving this car. Track use is different and I'm not gonna be able to put it on the track, but on a normal road when you're just trying to go fast, maybe weaving in and out of traffic, maybe doing some sort of illegal things. Um, holy crap, is this thing good? And I like how it shows the power and torque meters of how much percentage of the power and torque you are using. It's, it's wow, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now we can go ahead and put it into comfort mode and see how this thing does in comfort all calm and everything like that suspension is raised and it just turns into a normal driving car without any issues in fact i'll put on the navigation screen so we can see where we're going make it full view and there you go everything's calm the brakes are still a little touchy in comfort mode those don't change um, and they're touching no matter what but the throttle response is light easy to use i can't see wow okay it's just it calms down it turns into an a7 without any problems this is where you're going to be getting that 22 miles per gallon not when you are um hooning it on a highway as hard as you can oh okay really really well around the bends no issues <laughs> oh gosh look at that about every mode you put this in it feels pretty dialed in i know this is so much tuning potential too with the, that turbocharged v8 i mean this thing could easily make over 700 horsepower and people have done it i, I would love to ride in one of those where they're just abs absolutely ballistic vehicles so yeah overall i really like how this car drives um and i just even in something like comfort mode dynamic mode whatever mode you're in the car is comfortable it's luxurious feeling and you can't really hate on it so that is the 2022 audi rs7 i absolutely love this vehicle it brings back the great memories of the qa while adding a super experience to it and with that wonderful powertrain what's not to love about this car can't wait till i get my hands on something like an m8 or a gt63 to see how they stack up against this i know the gt63 when it comes to performance is going to blow this out of the water and the m8 too but when it comes to luxury and everything like that i'd love to see how they stack up so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure you hit that like button down below and if you want to see more from us make sure you subscribe and i will see you all in the next video